When I first saw that that's where you were from, my first thought was like, wow, there's a lot of good players from that area. Like, who would you say, like, the best couple players are from, from the DMV? From the DMV, like, all time? All time. Like, they're talking football. Like, football. 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 My favorite, Stefan Diggs. So he's going to be my one off the ring. <laughs> I'm biased. He also went to my high school. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so Stefan Diggs, Chase Young. Chase Young is from here. That's the first guy I thought of, just because reason really? bias. <laughs> Jason. Oh, Caleb Williams. Blake Corum. I guess he said all the time, too. I'm sure. But, oh, John Allen. John Allen went to Stonebridge, the D-liner for the Commanders, yeah. Oh, wow. And he's right there, too. Yeah, he was. He, when I lived in Virginia, he was literally from high school. Like, he was insane. Just throwing it. He didn't end up going pro, but he was a dog in high school. Uh, Wes Brown. Tavon Austin wasn't far. But some people don't count all of Virginia in the game. But if you do count the whole state of Virginia, you got Mike Big, Tavon Austin. He played football a little bit, but he really didn't basketball. Allen Iverson. I remember watching his, like, football highlight tape, like, at quarterback. He probably could have played college football. Yeah, definitely could. Mm. I mean, it makes sense. We're both not that yeah. old. <laughs> but anyway, another interesting thing about you, um, I saw not this past year, but uh, well, actually, yeah, this past year, uh, you walked on to Georgia, right? Over a couple right. other schools that you might have had some interest from. Right. And now was Georgia, well, obviously worth it. You guys won, you know, the national championship. But in your eyes of like your career, your playing time, your future, do you think it was worth it instead of going somewhere where you could have maybe played more? Yeah, so I mean, it was definitely the best option for me. My dad and my mom actually are very big on like big school, big opportunity. Not to throw any, I'm not gonna say anything, but I had a few opportunities to go to smaller schools, maybe play earlier, play right. The high school I went to was very competitive. The conference I played was very competitive, so I was always used to be the best, play with the best. So if you want to be the best, you got to play against them. That was Georgia. They were the first thing they really for me, which a lot of people find weird because my recruitment. Right, was right. My recruitment was all. If I didn't like build up, I guess I built down, in the lack of better terms. But right. It was for me. They made me feel like family. They made my mom feel like family. My pops loved them. So <laughs> it was no brainer. It's all you need, right? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw your your high school career was like not typical, like a recruiting thing, right? With, like, injuries, uh, I saw with COVID, of course, and then maybe some upperclassmen ahead of you when you, you know, started in high school. What was the biggest challenge, you think, to get your name out there? Or were you, or, or, or is it just basic luck? It was a little bit of both, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed, I should say. It was a little bit of luck. I'm religious. I believe in that kind of stuff, so I believe you create your own luck. Elementary school, I played the one football, but the top, the top schools... So I just always put that in the air. I'm not, I'm not even like the manifestation thing, but I believe what you see matters. So I told myself, I played D1 from my big kid. I knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. Challenge, I'll probably just more say, people are going to doubt you. And when things aren't going, especially, like I said, you tell people for years and years and years, I'm going to go D1, I'm going to D1. And up until my, really my senior year, it was like the tail end of my junior year, Nothing. So people look at me like, you know, I'm sure I'm be one since four. You know, now it starts to creep in, but you know, you, you got to brush that off. You listen to everybody else, you know, everybody else. So. Absolutely. And you, I mean, nothing is ever perfect. And the fact that you're here where you are, and now it's been a, a full year that you're there. You know how it works, regardless of what happened in the past. You're here where you are. I'm a big believer in like, you can't really focus on the past because it's already happened. You just kind of worry about the current time and moving forward and making the best, you know, way for yourself. So now going into this next year and your future years of college, what's the big goal for this year specifically? My biggest goal this year is to contribute to this team. Um, Coach Kirby, he's a great guy. He's always talking about the team. Nobody's bigger than the team. And come to Georgia, realize everybody here is good. Your role that you might have in high school, you know, we have people who stuff in high school where they play all the other positions. Here, they might get drafted to the league strictly just on playing special teams. So for me, I'm just trying to decide on special teams this year and make sure my name out there and you know, just show coaches. Right, and you mentioned how Georgia is just like special teams guys get make some teams just because of that. That just shows like the floor is so high for Georgia that, right, right. you know, being number one isn't easy, of course, but being number one, you have that top level talent that, you know, you said you're looking for. Right, right. If we take a turn now to go more about yourself on the personal side, training, habits, stuff like that. What is your ideal morning routine during training camp? Usually wake up around 6. 
our schedule is kind of just playing out for the patient direction. Like that makes sense. Yeah, that we have like any practice, no pads, it's more like a walk through the same type of thing. And then we usually go on a break. It's got to either sleep, or eat, sleep, or eat, or get food, or get treatment. Then we come back for meetings again at practice. And after that, we're meeting all the way up until like 10 p.m., 10.30, and then we go to bed and we start. For During that brief break after that first uh walkthrough, what are you are you sleeping? Are you taking a nap? I'm either sleeping, it depends on the day. <laughs> you might be in that late meeting, that ten thirty meeting until ten thirty, or you might get lucky and your coach is like, okay, it's short. Right. I've I've seen past uh interviews about yourself of how you say like maybe your weight could be some sort of an issue for you or you're working on that the most. What's your ideal diet look like right now? And what's the end weight? Like, what's the goal for, like, what you want to weigh when the season starts? Well, my goal weight is at least 190. My mom was I got the taste buds of a 5-year-old. I ate the same things. I don't really try a lot of stuff. Steak, chicken, rice, mashed potatoes, damn near. There's a variation of everything. <laughs> so, like, here, I mean, we have a great nutrition team. This is all your needs and all to help you, you know, get a more balanced diet, carbs and green. Sometimes I'm not as responsive as they would like because like, that's not picky, but I've been trying to get better. Right? When you say like chicken, steak, like that, is that like meal prep sort of? Are you are you, are you ever cooking your own meals or is it all taken care of? So we have an option too. One thing I really, a lot of students, again, not to name any, are solely focused on football output, which in Georgia, believe it or not, that the Georgia really cares about us. So like they're teaching us we have like team for example, and a group of people and we got to pick like certain career paths we're interested in football, whether that's smart over ten years from now they bring in like real estate and business companies, different entrepreneurs. Right. That's in Coach Kirby took time out of like our regular practice time to do that. Mm-hmm. Um and then back to bring to bring him back to cooking. That was this example uh, free. It's usually Friday, but sometimes it'll change, but at least once a week we have cooking oh. where they'll teach us how to cook. I guess I'm picky, so I really only go on the days I want to cook stuff. I like just different things. How do you like, like your steak? Medium on a medium cut. Same. I used to be medium well and everybody kinda got on me for it. And so I, I just feel like the medium. flavor, right? Yeah, meetings as low as I could. They prepare a lot of our meals, but they do teach us to cook it. That's good. Yeah, I mean, myself moving into my own apartment, have to learn to cook because, yeah. you know, ordering out Uber Eats, it's expensive, you know, yeah. and mom's not there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. wish wish her eggplant farm was there, but like not yeah. not really right now. Um, well, still sometimes, but not all the time. Doesn't make up okay. Taking a turn back to the team now, right? Georgia, obviously, two peat national champions undefeated season last year. How do they do it again? How do you guys three beat? Stick to the blueprint. So like, you know, we've been doing this work. So I like, stick to it. You know, it's hard. And, you know, you get a big hit. We didn't lose a game last year. Before, I think we lost the one. You got to stay grounded. Have what we call a soul session meeting where you kind of go the team values. And we go our personal values and our team. So it just kind of keeps everybody grounded. Keeps everybody, you know, on the same track. You, know, you see a lot of dynasties fall. Really do the consistency, mm. comfortable people getting comfortable, people getting big heads. So I think Coach Kirby and our staff are just trying to avoid those things. You know, you got to take what you've seen in the past and try to just stop. I mean, I believe it's possible. In my mind, I'm being honest with you, but uh, you know, we just got to stick to the blueprint. The blueprint's clearly there. We just got to rock. Right. You mentioned the blueprint. What is the main like verbal message? Like, is there like a saying or a phrase you got like pasted on the walls everywhere? Is there something like that? We have a couple of team, uh, I guess I'll say our four values. Two ones I would say are the biggest is composure and actually so composure is like in a big game or even this regular game, whatever is happening is always saying, okay, we're up by fifty points or we're down by fifty points. We're looking the same. We have a thing, we have literal composure cards. So oh. like I don't know if you've ever heard the term somebody pulling your card, you know, we really have uh, for the team. So like for example, I think it was Penn State game. One of our players was struggling a little. Great guy, great player, just, you know, had an off game. Coach Kirby was really getting on him, and guys just walked up to Coach Kirby and really pulled out his closure card, and Coach Relax, everything like that. Wow. Coach Kirby came to us. We had people do it to us. You know, it's just organization. Because mm, it's like really, accountability. Yeah. The thing I really like about Georgia is it's not just those dogs and coaches. The nutrition staff is just as part of our core values as sport strength staff or you know the administration like, everybody's really in it together i think that's what makes it so unique and then connection i mean like i said those full session meetings they get intense it's kind of learning like your teammates background stuff you would have never know but yeah i mean when you have a deeper connection with your teammates like it makes you want to go a little bit harder i can't give up on this dude because i know what he's going through at home 
what he's going through here. You know? So mm -hmm. it just creates a deeper, a deeper connection. Um, right, right. Does that go deeper in position groups or not, or is it just everyone as a whole? So we have whole team like skull sessions, and then we have small groups that are kind of just mixed. Because the whole point is, like, I know all my positions. We talk every day, so I know all my positions, but I don't know, like, I'm not going to go ahead and be, you know, just get a position. Mm. Our, our small groups, they're usually about 10 to 15 people. They're comprised of every position you can think of, like, snappers and quarterbacks, right? But, like, it's all this stuff. You know, kind of, I like that. Cause it, like, me, different you know, people, different areas of life. Long snapper usually got a different personality than corn. But now you're learning different things about <laughs> everybody. Right, right. So right. going back to last year, you guys experienced, you ex personally experienced the national championship. You were there, parade, stuff like that. If you had to give one favorite memory of that, what would it be? Honestly, the cliche answer would be the national championship, but I would probably say I've never been a part of that. <laughs> I'll say, like, I love BC where I'm from, I love Virginia, I love Maryland, all that stuff. These people are crazy <laughs> football. Like, the closest thing I can compare it to the game because football is clearly not as big at home as it is here, but basketball. Like, I came to that parade, and, you know, I've seen, like, on the on Capitol, the Stanley Cup. Right, right. Yeah, parade, and, like, I had seen it, and I know it was kind of fun. So I'm like, okay, it's going to be something like that. When we went out here, it was bonkers. Like, it was Crowded for like a three mile radius, people walking by in our like chariot cars or whatever they call it. Right, right. One lady, very nicely, handed me her baby. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> oh, I got off, I got off of her. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. The car that was carrying me and a couple of my tickets. We were on like the back of the pickup truck car for bed. I got off, she ran up to me, she's like, I got a picture of her, of course, and then she just handed me her kid. So, I would have baby right here, to, and they're like, she's like, it's gonna love this when she grows up, and I was like, that's amazing. Well, I mean, fans, they're amazing. Two years ago, prior, right? Georgia, I don't think won in like forty years, right? So I guess yeah. the first time was a gigantic deal, and then to win twice, like mind blown, explosion type of stuff for everyone there, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, the town's really good. You go out just to like get food, you know, go hang out, stuff like that. Feel it. Everybody, you almost feel like a superhero. And this time from a dude, a redshirt last year, I didn't play. I feel just as connected in this community as Stetson Bennett, for example. They really appreciate it. I really like that. Now, this might be like uh, a question you probably know the answer to, and this has been in the media a lot. How, how, how old is Stetson Bennett, actually? 26. 26. Okay. Just want to... Six. hear from you okay cool cool yeah. uh, <laughs> is there like a favorite spot around uh around athens like where you guys are you know where the spot is to eat up like, get food or something like that it changes my favorite spot i would probably say consistently is boots um, i know that's kind of a chain i didn't really i knew they had one first name was here. i like their pizza a lot i go there like two times i know a lot of my teammates they talk about this new uh, chicken place that i've been up on drug seats it's downtown that stuff is actually really good. I went there last. You know, everybody's different. We got different tastes. Right, right. When you said when you said pizza, I was like, oh wow. My just recently this past week, I had family from Florida who came up to visit, and we're all from. My parents are from like the Brooklyn area, New York City, where pizza is known to be decent, right? Like really good. So my uncle, who's you know used to live there in Brooklyn, was like, oh wow, I'm coming here. We have to try pizza. So we actually didn't end up. We actually went to a Yankees game uh, in the Bronx uh, Thursday. It was, and we had pizza there, and he was like, oh my god, this. What have I been missing all these years or past year where I was in, in Florida? So I can definitely see how like favorite spots yeah. are like could be iconic for like a group of people or if you're used to something yeah my cousin lives she lives in new jersey now she used to live in yeah Atlanta. are you like a sicilian guy or a, a triangle guy triangle yeah. any toppings pepperoni sausage and bacon there you go bacon really i, I guess it, i guess it's meat yeah it's just meat sausage and pepperoni and then one time you know like those like quick fire pizza places yeah sometimes um, and one time a guy like I used to work for a pizza. I used to work for a pizzeria, and I would be like the delivery guy, and they'd give me pizza at the end of the night that no one had. So I would try all the stuff that like was still sitting there with the toppings. So I've tried like cauliflower pizza. My favorite, personally, buffalo chicken. That's it. One time it was French fries and chicken fingers on pizza that they had. I mean, it all goes down goes down the same way, but like it was a weird combination. Yeah, I know. What you Ever try like pineapple? Either of I. No. I like pineapple separately. Is that your favorite fruit? Yeah. Pineapple. I'm a big watermelon guy. I actually was at ShopRite the other day and with my uncle. The watermelons were like $12 for one watermelon. I was like, maybe I'm not having it this week. <laughs> my parents are Caribbean, so pineapples, water fruit. Mm. So if I were to come to like a family dinner for you guys, what would be the meal? I'd say 
Like some beans. My dad, he's been in America for 11 years, so I'm still probably cook some ribs. Love making pot roast. But all of it's got like Jamaican, you know, flair on it. So like it's not like regular barbecue ribs. So like jerk it up a little barbecue on top. Mm. Uh, even as pot roast, he kind of cooks it up Jamaican hives, I guess. But yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's usually a big one. Is it like heavily spiced, like good flavor? Yeah. It's the way to go. I know that in that area, um, it's big on seafood too, right? Are you guys big yeah. on like crabs? So everybody around from Asia this, I hate seafood. Oh no. I, <laughs> I never when I was little never get past the smell. I remember my grandma, she actually lives in Georgia, out by Alia. She but she used to live near us in Virginia. Um and she was a huge cook. So whenever we go to the grocery store, she picked me up after like daycare. Whenever we walk past that like seafood section, I just like it. Oh, everything? Like not even shrimp or something? Nothing. Oh, oh man. I tried it. I tried it. <laughs> wow. Oh, like the texture. I've never liked seafood. All right. I mean, ever try it at all? I've tried scallops. Okay. Tried Lobster, crab, shrimp, fish. I definitely wow. fish. All fish. I definitely <laughs> Wow. Cause that, that's literally my favorite. Like crab legs. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get, I get ragged on it, especially Maryland, you know, Maryland. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, isn't, like, blue crab, like, your thing? Or their thing? Yeah, Cold Bay and crabs. You don't like it. All right. Don't. What about fishing? Like, actual catching? DC, we never had, to, like, there is, like, some water bikes, you know, like, the Potomac and stuff. But, like, where I was at, we never really had them. Like, I've never been hunting. I've never been fishing. I got teammates telling me they'll take me, but actually, if I want to go hunting, I think it'd be cool, but. I've never been fishing, I've never, I mean, we never really had that type of stuff back home. Hmm. I mean, it's good to definitely experience a couple, like, different things at least once, right? right? Um, even trying new foods or, uh, you know, yeah. hunting, which could be out of pocket for, like, some people in different areas. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, especially at Georgia or any college team together, you probably meet a bunch of people that do a bunch of different things. Yeah. And when you're that close to each other, you know, you get invites everywhere, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I never want to go. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, if we wrap it up here, I have a last question for you, right? If you could go back to tell yourself, your younger self, maybe your 10 year old self, one thing, what would be the one thing you would tell them? I could go back in time and tell my 10 year old self. Probably tell him, listen to dad, but don't listen to the outside. Like I said, I have a lot of people that did not believe I would do what I'd be at right now. People like so called friends, even. So, I mean, you listen to that every day. Like, you know, people will tell you, like, you know, there's a cliche that your friends raise you more than your parents do sometimes. You go to school, you raise your friends and your peers more than you are your parents. But my dad would always tell me, like, you know, you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. My dad's very big on um, what he calls eternal optimism. So he's always optimistic, he's always going to see the bright side. And I always tell him, I'm like, you know, Dad, I don't know how it's going to go. Like, you're, getting, you're getting hurt, things aren't going right. He'd just be like, stop listening to other people. We're going to lock this. It's going to be fine. But that's always where my confidence came from. I just kind of screw it out. Um, but yeah, don't on a path like this. People are gonna doubt you. Whether you're the number one player or number a thousand, people are gonna doubt you. Like Stephen was a Heisman finalist, and people still trying to tell you he's not good. That only makes sense. He, he he don't listen to none of his doubters. So I kind of picked that up from him. You just gotta believe in yourself. And I'm a religious guy. I don't know if everybody else is. You believe in God. You believe in yourself. And you stay on the right path. Those things don't fall. It might not come like in my way. It might not come exactly how you wanted it to. You said you looked at one of my right? uh, I said I wasn't one of the kids flipping hats on the side of the day. Going out at other schools and then putting right. on the Jordan cap. One hat. My parents took my signing day pictures in our living room. I had one hat. Put it on. Signed my letter of intent. And that was it. I was just as fine. I would rather do that than anything. So I remember that moment I did yesterday. That's all I needed. Everybody's moment is different. That's what mine was. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And this is why I love talking to college athletes, because sometimes you get people like yourself who are so focused on where they want to be that really right. nothing else around them matters. And plus, when you're surrounded by people like your parents, like you said, it just becomes clear. And you seem like even your friends that maybe have doubted you, block them out. And you're yeah. good on that path wherever you are. It doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to be what everyone else wants to see. It's just all about you. And that path where you want to get to. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the part about friends, you know, I learned not a lot of successful people have billions of friends. I mean, that's a hard thing to learn, especially like middle school, high school, you know, the kids for life. So now I got my, here I got my group of friends back home. I got basically what I call my extended family. I got like five or six guys. I learned, you know, you just got to cut it down. I mm -hmm. used to have, what I'd say, like 20 friends. You got to have some differences and you know, have people that don't really have the best interest in art. So you just got to, Find your group, stick with them. Man, thank you so much for sitting down with us. I know 
I know a lot of uh, people who watch this will take some inspiration from you and try to replicate your story and like, you know, where you are right now, because college athlete, that's a high pedestal for a lot of, you know, younger kids out there. So I thank you again for sitting down with us and talking about it. <laughs> All right.